Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is creating a whole new category in adult animation series. When I think of adult animation series, I think of TV shows like Family Guy, American Dad, what else? Futurama, that was also a favorite of mine. I think of those where it's full an animation. They revo revolve around a family. Oh, so Solar Opposites was also a good one. It's on Hulu, but they're usually a family and they have dark humor. They include jokes about politics, current uh, culture, media influence on culture and what we believe and it's all these um really interesting topics that are formatted in a cartoony way so it makes it very enjoyable it's kind of like serious conversations done playfully so that's what i think of now when it comes to don't hug me i'm scared if you don't know what it is it's a british comedy horror musical web series and it was created by two people becky sloan and joe pelling and they created this series not only focusing on what i said adult animations focus on which are like very serious conversations done playfully but don't hug me i'm scared is really unique in that it utilizes pupamation, pup, pup, <laughs> that's not even a thing, utilizes a variety of uh, production styles, puppetry, live action. It also uses different animation styles like stop motion, uh, clay animation, computer animation, flash animation, like all kinds of different ways to animate you think of it it's probably in don't hug me i'm scared in at least in one episode i think that use of different styles really help the horror aspect to stand out like some of these episodes got such a reaction from me because the inclusion of the puppetry something that i know is like real unlike shows such as family guy where everything is like you know if someone trips and falls and blood splatters or something that it's fake when it comes to don't hug me i'm scared the use of those real life things that the audience that i know is real and there is blood or um, guts are shown or something really gross is shown to me. It has so much more impact that I really stopped and questioned if I wanted to continue watching the series because I got really grossed out and I think I had watched three episodes and I just, I, re I really questioned if I should stop, but I really wanted to know how this season was going to end. Okay, so I just want to go over my thoughts on each of the episodes. I do have one or two separate reaction videos on my channel watching the first and second episodes of the second season so i believe that is the work related one and the other one was death yeah so you can go watch those if you want but i'm just going to summarize each of the episodes and then dive into what i thought of it and then we'll eventually get to the the, the last episode about electricity, how important it is, and the finale. So the first episode revolves around three main characters, Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and the Duck, 
all questioning the concept of employment. And that leads the three guys to exploring the idea of work, what that looks like, and how that is important to having purpose in life. And so they all get a job. This episode, it really focuses on the three different guys getting the three different positions in this one company at this factory. And eventually, as the episode goes on, you can see a difference in how the red guy who gets the boss title, how he eventually turns on his friends and really looks down on them because they have a lesser job title. They're not as um, high on the job title hierarchy, you know? So that creates tension within the group of three and leads to really tragedy. I think the yellow guy loses an arm or something like that, or someone loses an arm at the end of the episode. There's blood everywhere and it's tragic. So that's the first episode. The second episode is all about death. And in this episode, the duck discovers that he is actually dead because that he's been neglecting to drink water. So at first when I watched this episode, I thought it was going to be about the importance of water and how there is constant push that everyone needs to be drinking a lot of water and stuff, but it, it wasn't. It was about death. There's a part in that episode where the duck is in the ground in a coffin and he needs to relieve himself and just does it right there. And it's really funny because the coffin is alive and thinks it's really gross that the duck is relieving himself inside the coffin's body. Like it's so interesting and weird and gross. So it's like, ew. Anyway, the third episode revolves around learning about families. What's a family? Maybe what's not a family according to society? What's a family dynamic that includes those who are not blood related and how okay that is? And the way the three guys start this lesson is by meeting a set of twins who find their way into the guy's house. I don't even know how that freaking happens. It's so weird. Um, but they meet the, these twins that say, oh, you're not supposed to live together if you're not blood related. So maybe you guys like, you're not a family. And that episode is really interesting because it shows you how a family doesn't have to be people who are just blood related. And <laughs> And the twins, you do learn what their family looks like. And it just goes to show just because you're what society says is a family. It doesn't mean it's all good and lovely roses because it's it's so weird. Like if you haven't watched it. I suggest you watch it for yourself, but it's really strange. So the guys learned that lesson in episode three. Episode four is now about a different dynamic around friendships. The yellow guy is pick, picked on by the duck and the red guy. And the yellow guy ends up like shrinking inside of himself and dissociates and we find that the yellow guy has now entered a new world in his own mind with his own friends and they do what they want to do it's all silly and weird and the duck and red guy try to get him back and so the way that they get him back is by taking out a worm out of his ear who's like a whole different character and the worm it represents the, I guess, thoughts that maybe come into your mind that 
these people don't like you, they're not good friends, um, you're not worthy, all these just really not helpful messages that sometimes that that worm inside your head can tell you. And by taking that worm out, the yellow guy is able to be brought back and re-enter his friendship with the duck and the red guy. But I mean, to be honest too, the duck and red guy are not really nice to the yellow guy. So that, that one's all about friendship. All right. Now, episode five is about transportation and how the three guys learn this lesson is from a very old rusty car train it's weird i don't really know what it is it's mostly a car it ends up being a car but throughout the episode the older character changes into like different ways of transportation so i'm just gonna say it's a car and the red guy wants to leave the house and wants to explore, go on an adventure with the, his pals. But the duck and the yellow guy are very hesitant because they don't really know what that would look like. They don't know how to do that. So they're very scared. But the red guy takes the other two guys on a road trip in the older car character. And they have a very difficult time navigating the roads because they don't know how to drive. They don't know how to read GPS. They just, they don't know where they're going. So it's very hectic. And it was here that I started to like question the messaging. Like it was a little confusing what the writers what the messaging was in this episode. Like, obviously we're learning that transportation, navigating around the world outside of your house is more challenging than what it may appear to be. But the fact that the duck, the yellow guy and the red guy had no idea how to drive or like that the outside looked a certain way, it was very strange and I just, it was a little confusing. So that was the fifth episode. And it ended really weird too. I was so I was so confused. It just jumped to like the next episode. Odd. Now the sixth episode. You guys are gonna have to kind of help me with this one. I'll give you the basic gist because I think I understood. So the basic gist of the last episode is about learning about the importance of electricity. And from watching that episode, it definitely seems like it is a kind of a message about society moving in the direction of using electricity more technology <laughs> technology more and it really consuming our lives like it, it's all just a huge mess and it's definitely seen in this episode with the duck and the red guy who are changing everything about their environment to include something electrical so their wires hanging this way that way like it's you could see it in this episode it's very clear but what more what most of my questions are around are that in this episode the yellow guy ends up switching batteries cuz i guess he's he was fueled by batteries that's odd yeah, i thought that was very random but it was to get at this change in in story and that now the yellow guy, instead of being like that friend that everyone jokes about, isn't as like fast to get things and is a little slow. 
now with these new batteries in his body he is he, he's awake he can see things clear understand things better for example he can look at the bill electric bill and see that maybe there's something wrong with it they were over overcharged or there, there are details in there that are not really clear that they need more clarity on so that really catches the other two guys by surprise and the yellow guy goes on this journey upstairs in their house going floor by floor meeting different versions of the duck and the red guy and the higher he goes in the house the more intelligent the two guys are in that room and when he reaches i think the third floor when, whatever <laughs> the red guy and duck are like alien basically and they're experimenting on this like thing and this really got me thinking about how like humans experiment trying to learn about things but they won't experiment on each other because they know the dangers that experimentation has even though they're fine doing it on something else there's no emotion attached to them experimenting on this thing but when it comes to each other it's no so that is that was really interesting and i wonder if maybe if you saw this episode if you connected it to that messaging as well and then when the yellow guy gets to the attic <laughs> he meets this woman that's basically the conductor of their their lives in this house she's playing this piano it's actually very nice it's a little soothing I think it was the only time watching this series that I felt relaxed. My name is Leslie. It's nice to meet you. You're one of my favorites. So that was actually really nice. But she's like weird. She has this really interesting jacket on. She has cuts and stitches on her face and when I was watching it she reminded me of a character who would be in the Johnny Depp version of Alice in Wonderland like the way she looked the powdery kind of makeup and the really bright clothes it was very very intriguing I, I liked it even though it was like really creepy but she has this dollhouse of the house that they're in with all these floors open, you can see, and exactly what's going on. So the different levels, where the yellow guy was on the third floor, second floor, like everything is laid out. And she has the yellow guy help put together the house to go back to how it was before. And in return for helping her uh, bring back everything, clean it up, she gives him a book. What this book is, I have no freaking idea. That's where my question is. What the hell is this book? It has these th like images, this writing kind of on it that I don't really know what it says, if it even says anything. But the yellow guy takes the book, goes downstairs, and because the duck and the red guy are uncomfortable with the awareness the yellow guy has now that he switched batteries, they take out the batteries, which in turn leads the yellow guy to go back to how he was, not knowing the book that he's carrying is actually very important. And we want him to open it so that we can really get the answers that they we, we've been wanting, I guess, this entire time. 
This leads the yellow guy to shred the book and not even open it. So is there any idea of what this book could be? Because I have no idea. The way they set it up is like this woman is the creator, the god, but the book that she gives, is it like the Bible? How they're like how they're supposed to act, the rules of the house, like there's really no no clue into what this book is. So I was left very confused and very angry because I I felt so unsatisfied left with no answers to anything. I mean, I didn't even have questions coming into this season watching this show. But to quickly introduce this like this character, this creator, and to set up like there are all these questions that maybe you didn't think you had, but like, here you go, here are all the answers. And to quickly just like take it away like that, it's like, oh, it's so frustrating. So I kind of wish that they did a better job and there's probably a reason why they did that. I could care less. I didn't like the ending at all. Them shredding the book, like I just, at first, I thought the yellow guy was going to eventually take out his new fresh batteries that allowed him to wake up to what was around him because he enjoyed the time that he did have with his two pals, even though he wasn't as aware. So that's what I thought the ending was going to be like. But it took that left turn and I just, I was not happy. So hopefully that all made sense. And if you hadn't watched, if you haven't watched the season or Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, I suggest you watch it and you let me know what you think. Um, but that that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.